Okay, we're gonna go through five inequalities. We're gonna start out with some simple ones and get a little bit more challenging as we go through these. See if you can pause the video and do these on your own. The first one, what you wanna do when you're solving these inequalities is you wanna get the variable by itself on one side of the uh, inequality, and ideally you wanna get it on the left side. So let's start with this first one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add four to both sides of the inequality to keep it balanced, right? So that's gonna give us 20 and the four and negative four cancel out. And now what's the opposite of multiplying by five? We wanna divide both sides by five, and that comes out to x is less than four. Now, one thing you wanna be careful of when you're working with inequalities is that if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, this inequality sign will change directions, okay, or flip. But in this case, we uh, divide it by positive five, so it doesn't change direction. Now, when you look at this on the number line, Here's four over here, here's five, here's three. See how x is less than four? That means that it can be any value to the left of four on the number line. So as these values get smaller and smaller. So it doesn't equal four, it's just gonna be less than four. So we're gonna draw this as an open circle, okay? So not including four, and then all the values uh, to the left. One way that students sometimes think about this is that you can think of this when the variable's on the left like this, it kind of looks like an arrow. See how it's pointing to the left? So all the values less than four to the left of four. Okay, let's try number two, a little bit more challenging. So this one, same idea, we wanna get this variable by itself on one side of the inequality. So we can think about working from the outside in towards that variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract seven, so I'm gonna do the opposite, I'm gonna add seven, okay? So now we're down to negative two x is greater than or equal to 10, because the seven and negative seven cancel. The opposite of multiplying by negative two is to divide both sides by negative two, so those cancel, and now we're just left with negative five. But look what just happened. I divided both sides by a negative number. This inequality sign is gonna change directions, so it's gonna be facing the other way. Instead of greater than or equal to, it now becomes less than or equal to. One way to remember this too, sometimes students get a little bit confused with the greater than and less than. See how this kind of looks like an L tilted? So you can think of it like L for less than. And now we're just gonna to go to the number line. So here's negative five here, this is negative six, and this is negative four. It's less than or equal to, so now this time it equals negative five, okay, as well as all the values that are to the left then or less than negative five. Okay, number th uh, three, see if we can do this one. This one's a little bit more challenging because we have the variable on the right side, okay? So let's go see how we're gonna approach that one. Let's start by distributing the negative one half, so that's negative one half x, plus seven over two, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and we've got four on the left here still. Now what I'm gonna do here, because I have these fractions, is I'm gonna multiply everything by two to clear the denominators, to get rid of those fractions. So if I multiply everything by two, that gives us eight is greater than negative one x plus seven. And then uh, let's continue to sign over up here. I'm going to uh, rewrite it, so we have eight is greater than negative x plus seven, and then instead of adding seven, I'm gonna do the opposite, I'm gonna subtract seven from both sides. So that's one is greater than negative x. I'm gonna get the x by itself by dividing both sides by negative one. So now we have x and negative one, but look what just happened. I multiplied or divided both sides by a negative number. This inequality changes direction, right? But we also have the variable on the right. We wanna really get the variable on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up this whole inequality, I'm gonna flip it over, and so this is gonna be x, negative one. See how this is opening towards the x, okay, like that? It's still gonna be opening towards the x, okay? So I just took the whole thing, I flipped it over. Uh, x is greater than negative one, or if you read this from uh, right to left, this is like negative one is less than x. Now we can go ahead and graph it. So here's negative one, here's negative two, here's zero. We want all the values that are greater than, uh, but not including negative one. So greater than we're going to the right. So all the values that are greater. Okay, number four, a little bit more challenging this one. We've got uh, variables on both sides of the inequality. I'd start by distributing the two. So that gives us two x minus six. Distribute the three, that's three x plus three. And now we wanna get the variables on one side and numbers on the other, just like solving an equation. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to subtract three x from both sides. So that gives us negative one x. And then instead of subtracting six, I'm going to add six to both sides. So that comes out to nine. But we have a negative x, which is like a negative one x. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative one. 
And remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, that inequality sign changes directions. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 9, and we have negative 9, negative uh, 10 over here, and negative 8 over here, and x is less than or equal to, so it includes negative 9, as well as all the values less than or to the left of negative 9. Okay, number five, last problem, Let's see if we can do this one. Uh, here we're going to distribute the 1 fourth. And one thing when you're working with fractions that makes it a little bit easier is to put the whole numbers over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself. And what you can do is you can multiply the numerators together, the denominators together, so that gives us 4 over 4, which is 1. And then here we have 1 times 8 is 8, 4 times 1 is 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And that's an easier way to work with uh, fractions and whole numbers. And then now let's just combine like terms. 2 minus 1 is 1. And let's subtract x from both sides of the inequality. So those cancel, and we get 1 is less than negative 1. Now what happened to our variable? It canceled out on both sides, right? And look what we're left with. Is 1 less than negative 1? No. So that means that there's no solution to this problem. And if you were graphing this on the number line, you would just leave that number line blank, okay? Because there's nothing that makes this true. Now, if it was the other way, where 1 was greater than negative 1, that's always true, and it would be all real numbers, and you could then shade or graph you know, the entire number line because it's infinitely many solutions. So these are special cases when the variable cancels out. If you want to see more pre-algebra topics, check out my giant pre-algebra review where I go through inequalities as well as a lot of other pre-algebra concepts in that video right there. I'll see you over in that video.